Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? We've got Will Crosby. How you doing, buddy? Hi, it's me. We've got I'm my good. friend Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, my name's Jimmy. <laughs> Guys, this is incredible. I can't believe we have three cameras and three audio feeds leading into this. How excited are you? Uh, mildly, uh, to say the yeah. least. I, I think I got so nervous about the setup and then I got so excited that I have this actually working that I forgot how to do a proper intro. So let's just skip it. <laughs> let's go. We're playing fiasco. Uh, let me kick it over. Boom. There it is, boys. That's it. That's fiasco. I, I still can't believe this is working. Um, oh, that looks pretty good. Right? Uh, so we're going to be playing fiasco. We're using roll 20. Fiasco, I'll do a quick intro. It's basically a cooperative... I'll hold up the actual book here. I'm an idiot. I'm just way too excited for this. It's a cooperative storytelling <laughs> game. Kurt Operative. <laughs> it's a Kurt Operative storytelling game. <laughs> where each of us is going to be taking turns describing scenes in a movie where the characters, plot, details, locations, object, motivations, aftermath, exposition, plot points, etc. All the parts of that movie is kind of half determined by dice roll, half determined by improv scenes. So um, it's a lot of fun. Will, what's the playset or kind of the setting slash location that we've chosen for today? We on a train. We on a train. We're doing a yeah. fiasco on the Disoriented yeah. Express. Express. So let me read the intro here. I'm so excited. Fiasco on the Disoriented Express. All aboard. It is the 1930s, and war is nigh. I would hurt you, Jim. <laughs> it's the 1930s, and war is nigh in Europe with Herr Hitler as Chancellor of Germany. But still, you can travel across Europe and the Orient in style on board the Orient Express. Ride the rails in style and experience the best Europe has to offer. Just remember, your fellow passengers have ulterior motives, dark desires, and secrets to conceal. Is that man you're sharing a drink with just a green grocer from Brighton or a Nazi sympathizer bent on world domination? Who cares? Nice. Sit back and hang on. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Movie night. So these are kind of inspirational pieces. Murder on the Orient Express. The first great train robbery. Silver Streak. Throw Mama from the Train. And Trans-Siberian. I'm pretty excited here. Um, let me pull up chat real quick. Just Oh, we have Bonfall here. Bonfall, thanks for joining. What's up, Bon? Oh, I should probably pull up chat, too. All right, so here's basically how it goes. So each, you can't really see it too well, but basically there's a chart. Each of us is going to be defining um, a relationship between us. So, for example, like f father and long lost brother or, you know, like uh, child servant and elderly master. Uh, and then we'll also be adding uh, locations, objects and a need, at least one of each. That are things you know like the musty stock room or the need being uh, a need to get revenge for your lover's murder um the way we decide those is we have charts and the charts every item in the chart has a number next to it um so we roll a bunch of dice and we pick from the dice to determine which items we're choosing um so let me roll all these dice real quick uh oh i think i picked selected too many there we go there we go. There's the dice oh. pole, folks. Ooh. Okay, so let's start with um, relationships. So something to keep in mind is I'm going to read. There's basically a top-level category. They call it a relation, and then there's a detail. So there's six top-level categories, and then under each top-level category is six options. So you have to define the top-level category. You have to pick a top-level category before you can pick a sub-category. Um, and when you pick one of the six, you spend one of the die that you have used to pick that category. So let's start with relationships. I'm going to name the top six level. Number one, consulting detectives and other busybodies. Number two, family. Number three, trained personnel. Number four, crime. Number five, friendship. And number six, weird bedfellows. Um, Will, I'll let you go first. You and I have played this <sighs> game before. Yes. So define a top level relation between you and Jimmy or you and me. Wait, or, the or dice in the center are the one we're choosing from? Exactly. So what do we have? We have a one, two, three, four, no fives. So we can't pick any option labeled five. So no okay. friendship. What are you thinking? No, absolutely no friendship. So it was detectives um, and busybodies, family, trained personnel, crime, or weird bedfellows. 
I think I'm going to do, uh, and I can choose for me and you, or I can do, I'm choosing, sorry. Yeah, there's, you can choose any of the three relationships between us. Any of the three relationships. Cool. I'm going to choose for you and Jimmy. Yes. Mm. I'm going to do train personnel. Ooh. You got a lot of practice in with that all aboard earlier. Oh, that's true. All aboard. Um, okay, so I'll go next. I'm gonna, So now I can either choose to add a detail to the one between Jimmy and I because we already have the top level, or I can choose the top level. I'm going to choose the top level. Oh, wait, sorry. What number was that? That was a three? Yes. So I'm just going to throw this up here because we already used it. So gotcha. I'm going to do between Will and Jimmy... I kind of want to do, um, how are you guys feeling about crime? Crime? I love it. Yeah, I love crime. Let's I do, do crime. it every day. <laughs> so you guys have a crime relationship. Okay, so Jimmy, we're heading back to yep. you. So now it's your turn. You get to pick, there's either a top level relationship between Will and I, or you can pick the detail for you and I or Will and Jimmy. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, I will do top level for you two, and okay. I think, can I do ba, 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 consulting long... detective? Yes, yes, you can. Oh, I'm okay with that. So what was it? Dete I'm just yeah, I'm just gonna type in consulting detectives because I don't have a big space yeah. here. Okay, um, so now it's back to Will. Um, so we have three low-level details. Wait, that didn't... Oh, now it just changed. Never oh, mind. Sorry, I had to click out of it. How dare you? Um, <laughs> what was so I'm choosing what now? You're choosing um, a relationship detail for any of the three. Relationship detail. So let me read them real quick. So for consulting detectives and busybodies, we have famous Belgian detective and bumbling companion, British detective and physician companion, parish priest and well-meaning parishioner, meddling doc doctor and stalwart drinking companion, archaeologist and current love interest, and bumbling French policeman and Chinese servant. For Jimmy and Will, <laughs> for Jimmy and Will crime <laughs> options, we have famous thief and gunman accomplice, infamous cat burglar and future victim, mobster and spouse, art thief and art forger, serial killer and next target, anarchist and unsuspecting friend. And for Ian and Jimmy, which is trained personnel, we have conductor and head porter, bartender and drunk customer, porter and unruly passenger, mm -hmm. train engineer and assistant, Chef and head waiter and stowaway and train detective. What's a train detective? Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so just remember, I believe four and five are no longer available. The numbers four and five. Okay, so I'm going to pick. Oh, man, I really want to do the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to. I'm calling. No, <laughs> no, no way we're doing it. <laughs> very poor decision. Oh, boy. Um... So I think I'm going to do mm -hmm. I'm going to do oh man. Hey, take your time over there. Uh, okay, I'm going to do uh for <laughs> <laughs> shut up. For the consulting detectives. Oh, yeah. that's us, isn't it? That is us. Oh, actually uh oh, oh gosh. Oh gosh. No, train personnel, I'm going to do conductor and head porter. Okay. Got it. And question, can... what is a porter? And what is a head porter? So I recently watched um, Murder on the Orient Express, the 70s one. So still holds up. Very good movie. I, that's the only one I've seen. So Porter right. Porter is the guy who was like like the waiter almost. He was like helping people in and out of the rooms. I believe that's the porter. Does that make sense? Even it. Like he like stays in the hallway he's and he's like, like the, yeah. the bellman. A porter is a railway employee that answers all my questions. Perfect. Yeah. What was it? Conductor <laughs> and porter? So glad we could handle that. Yeah, and uh, the role of a porter is to assist passengers at railway stations and to handle the loading, unloading, and distribution of luggage and parcels. Yeah, and, but I think in and in the United States, yeah, in the United States, it was used for employees who attended the passengers or keeping cars. Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, that one's done then. So now it's my turn. So let me look through the options real quick. I think um, we'll. And Jimmy. And we'll have to start figuring this out as we go along. So, for example, Ian and Jimmy, we are a conductor and head porter. We don't have to decide which is which now. Just at some point, we'll we'll figure it out to determine. But I... Oh, man. 
crime, we can't do serial killer in next target. Why not? Oh, is it taken? Um, you know what? I want to do uh, number six, anarchist and unsuspecting friend for the detail between Jimmy and Will. <laughs> oh, no. Anarchist and unsuspecting friend. Um, I'm, I'm making it clueless because it's less letters. You're clueless. Okay. Um, so now we just have the detail left. Jimmy, you get to pick the detail between Ian and Will. Oh, great. For the consulting detectives? Yeah, I believe the only options are Belgian detective, bubbling companion, British detective, and physician uh, companion, uh, parish, parish hey. priest, and well-meaning parishioner, and bumbling French policeman and Chinese servant. <laughs> <laughs> we lucked out, guys. <laughs> no, um, I'm going to go with famous Belgian detective. And bumbling companion. And bumbling companion. Yeah, because okay. I, I want to hear what a Belgian accent sounds like. I, I'm sure that you're both very oh, well practiced. Uh, uh, we're all waiting for Wait it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I think you're the Belgian detective, though, because I'm a trained personnel. Oh, dang it. You're my bumbling companion, but I'm also an anarchist, or am I a clueless friend? I'm going to put, I'm going to put friend. I don't know. Um. Okay, so we, now that we have him, let's let's at least talk through it a little bit. So from my perspective, um, with Will, I'm his friend. But I'm also... Jimmy, would you prefer to be conductor or a head porter? I, I think either would be a friend with a Belgian detective. Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, which... Up, up, up to you. Um... I think I guess the, head porter should the I don't know I'll give you yeah okay I'll give you a head porter so you're head porter I'm the conductor okay. um Will is a Belgian detective we've let's just say we've known each other before yes Jimmy and Will is it I guess the question I have is is it funnier or less funny that the Belgian detective is the anarchist or the head porter I, I think it's funnier that the Belgian detective is Clueless, clueless that his friend is an anarchist yes okay. yes absolutely okay also uh, a head porter who's also an anarchist could cause a lot of anarchy yes that's right so does that mean <laughs> i'm going to be an anarchist head porter yes jimmy is an yes. anarchist head porter <laughs> i am a conductor slash detective's friend and will is a belgian detective slash clueless <gasps> friend Bum, bum, bum. So I guess we all kind of know each other. We're old chums, but we have secrets. Okay. So now we get to do, um, as you can see, we have six dice left. One's going to be for an object. One's going to be for a need. And one's going to be for a location. The thing about a need is it's the need tends to go on a person. Um, so let's do needs next. Who... Uh, G who just Jimmy just went? So Will gets to go next. So Will, Jimmy got corn. Pick a, a need, a location, or an object top level. So let me read through them real quick while you look at them. Needs to get even, to get away, to get respect, to recover, to get rich, to get the truth. Location: Great train stations of Europe, Istanbul. Passenger cars, unexpected stops, the train on and about the train. And objects, items of desire, items of guilt, items of destruction, items of apparel, items of appetite, items of miscellany. What do you think, Will? So, so I'm picking from all of those. You're picking a top-level need, object, or location. So yeah, you okay. basically are picking from all of those. I'm just making sure. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm going to do uh, locations. What do we have left? Uh, I'm going to do on and about the train. Okay. Which one was, what number is that? Six. Six. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So um, now we need, it's my turn. So I can either do the location detail, an object, or a need. 
And I, I think I want to do... Okay, I'm, I'm going to do... Oh, shoot. We're down to just threes and twos. I'm going to do under a passenger car for the location. <laughs> so that's just a location. So, yeah. Question? That, that means that that location just has to appear or the entire thing takes place <laughs> under a passenger car? No, I think, I think it just has to appear at some point. It, and it doesn't even necessarily have to appear. We could have like, like maybe I have a traumatic injury that involved me getting run over by a car and it keeps coming up again, you know? So it's it's just something that, that has to play into the story in some way. Hi, Colin. Thanks for joining. What's up, Colin? We're doing pretty good for setup here. Okay, so we've got um, just an object and a need left. Top level object or top level need, Jimmy. I believe your only options are for need, it's to get away, to get respect, or object, items of guilt, items of destruction. Ooh, items of destruction. Sorry, I sounded a bit too excited. <laughs> <laughs> items of destruction. Um, I think items... Items of... Uh, Destruction? Maybe. Items of destruction? Uh, yeah. Cool. Just to really limit our options. Okay, well, so that's, you can either add detail. Echoes back. But you know what to do, Will. I'm at, yeah, I'm adding, uh, Uh, sorry, object or oh man, the echo's killing me now. Object or uh, do you have it open on your side? Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, keep. Why keep do I keep... I'll look into it. Um. Okay. What am I? I lost the train of thought now. Now I'm. What did Jimmy just pick? What did you just pick? He, he of yeah, you're either he picking picked the item of destruction, right? Top level need or detail object, right? Top level need. Okay, okay, sorry, that's where I lost the thread. Um, okay, top level need. We've got what? Only twos left. So I guess I'll do to get away. Yeah. So the good news is this last die, which I believe is going to be Jimmy, is wild. So you get to do whatever you want. Uh, where do you oh. want this? Where do you want this need, Will? So you get to put this need on a person. Um, I'm gonna say uh, Jimmy. Oh, I'm gonna put it on Jimmy. Okay, oh. I'm gonna put it. We can't really tell. We're just gonna. It's gonna be on Jimmy. It's hard to tell. What was it to get away? Yeah, to get away. I wanna. Okay. And uh, oh. for the wild. Wait. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so so I have to pick. I have to go before you. I only I can either okay. pick the detail for need or the detail for object, so which is either to get away from the Nazis with a secret movie I stole from them. I kind of I kind of want to lean away from Nazis. I think I feel like it's a yeah. Problem. They're always kind of bad. Why are they always the bad guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bad. Um, what was it? Items of destruction? This is Jimmy for Nazi rights. <laughs> okay, so the object that has to come into play at some point is a kangaroo hide bullwhip. <gasps> oh, man. This is great already. I'm so happy. Okay, um, so now it's it's... Jimmy, you get to decide under the to get away need category which of those six you're going to choose. So I'll read them real quick. To get away from the person who killed my beloved relative, from the Nazis with the secret movie I stole from them, with the fabulous jewel, the eye of the Jaguar. Jaguar. Uh, from the mystically chosen path I'm doomed to follow, from my crazy ex-spouse and their trained assassins, and from the snowbound train. So you get to pick any of those. And... This could apply to anyone? Um, 
No, this is your need. What is your oh, character's? It is? Yes. The oh, need gets wow. applied to a person. The object and location just kind of hang out. Um, I think with the uh, Eye of the Jaguar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? It's a giveaway. <laughs> I? Am I saying that wrong? I? What? No. no Ian said jag, Jaguar. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, is the echo on your side? What echo? Jimmy, can you talk? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, maybe is echo's gone. Oh my I goodness. I heard it. Uh, we'll never find it. I, don't know, I thought I turned it off. Okay, so um, Will, how about you go around the horn and you just sum it up so far what the characters are, objects, locations, and needs. I'm going to do a little hunting on my side. Okay, so, so so far Ian is a, he's part of the train personnel. He is a conductor. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Uh, oh, we didn't really choose the location, but a location we decided on that has to appear in this is on or about the train, which is under a passenger car. Uh, Jimmy is a anarchist and head porter who uh, wants to get away. And what was the reason you chose to get away? With the eye of the because Jaguar. I... With the eye of the Jaguar. Yes. Oh, sorry. It just updated. With the eye of the Jaguar. And I am a Belgian detective, and I'm also friends with uh the anarchist head porter and i am also clueless that he is an anarchist um and something that is the object specific to jimmy or is that to anyone uh the item I, of destruction i think it's anyone so there's an item of destruction in play which is a kangaroo hide bullwhip okay looking pretty good so do you think that's enough? That this is something that usually happens. Do we feel like that's enough, or do we want to talk through a little bit more of an establishment before we get started? I think uh, I don't think there's any like major details missing. So maybe maybe let me just talk through it a little bit. So Will and I, I think you're kind of a traveling Belgian detective, and you're on the train a lot. And I think maybe you're also famous, kind of like Hercule Poirot. So wow, so, you nailed that. So I know of you. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I like I know of you, and we've become friendly over the years just because you're frequently yeah. on my train. Um, for Will and Jimmy, maybe it's the same way with you two. Like you're just friendly with the head porter because yeah. you're always on the train. Okay. Yes. Yes. Jimmy and I, I think we're we work together, but I think we can figure out if we're friendly or we hate each other or, you know, I, well we'll figure it out. We don't have to establish I think it now. It has Mm -hmm. Well, I think it would be more interesting if there was some antagonism between us. If we are both friends with the yeah. Belgian guy, there has to be a contentious relationship here. I agree. Um, Should we do... Um, I, I think the Belgian has to have an accent. Yes, he does. Let's hear it, Will. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hello. That's pretty good. It's good enough. Hello. Um, Hello. I am a detective. Do we want to, do we, where do we think the train is? Are we heading west to east or east to west? Or do we think um, we figure that out? I think we figure that out. Oh, you know what I just sure. realized? Actually, yeah, Will, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying you have to figure it out, but you're the only passenger so far, basically. Oh, oh that's true. So it's, it's going to be a little bit up to you. I mean, we can establish it with other stuff, but, um. Okay, I think I think I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Um, yeah, I think I'm good to go. Okay, sure. so I'll kick it off. Um, just something to keep in mind because you guys can't move the dice. So the way it works is, as somebody like let's say, I'm going to start first. So I'll start driving a scene, and then the scene will happen. So at some point in the scene, somebody has to give me a white die or a black die from the middle, and that basically tells me. Am I going to have a happy ending slash am I going to get what I want out of the scene, what my character wants, or is it, it going to be a bad ending or my character gets frustrated, he doesn't get what he wants. And that'll help us like wrap up the scene in a way. Um, but because so you guys... That, can I 
pick up? How do I pick up a die? Yeah, so you guys can't do that. So just just interrupt and say, like, you know, if I'm running the scene, they just be like, Ian, I want to give you a white die, and I'll take care of it on my end. So I'll just I'll raise my hand, and then you can kind I'll of just ignore you. Come to yeah. a natural stopping. <laughs> <laughs> come to a natural stopping point, and I will. Okay. Say a die. Please. Are we ready? <clears throat> I've watched uh, Murder on the Orient Express, so this is going to be heavily inspired by it. Here we go. First scene. So just remember, we're each going to do two scenes, and then we do the tilt, and then we'll do two scenes again. Istanbul, 1937. We open on a train station, and there's a train idling, and it's smoke is pouring out of the train station, filling it, and it's a bustling train station, and there's all these people moving through the train station, and we follow people through the baggage, and then we come in close on a man who steps from the train. Oh, you know what I forgot? Oh, I'm so glad. We have to come up with the names for each other. Oh. Okay, so everybody come man, up with your name real quick. description. And too. tell me what your name is. I already is. came out with mine, so. Okay, I'll type it in real quick, Will. What's your name? I'm Helmut Dubois. <laughs> uh, I'll show it to you. Like that? Uh, yes. Wow, nailed it. Um, Jimmy, do you have a name or you sure. need some time? I think I need some time. Um, yeah, well, to go along with the Murder on the Orient Express from the 70s, I could be like Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> <laughs> That's just your name. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actors. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. All right. I'm Gerald. Oh, Hatch. Hatch. Gerald Hatchins. Name. Actually, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's not Gerald Hatchins. It's Reginald Hatchins. Reginald Hatchins. There we go. Uh, my name will Just be like, Eustace Fizzleby. <laughs> oh. I was about to say, just imagine you're a poor, working class, ugly, dirty, smelly person. <laughs> I, watched, imagine yeah, oh, man. I watched Parasite, so. <laughs> Did you say Fizzleby? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So it's sorry. Me. So we're we're following. It's not the... a why. <laughs> Wait, Ian. You got to start from the beginning. You were okay. setting the mood so well. You just take two. Yeah, that was weird when the narrator just started shouting <laughs> out. Oh shit! I forgot about other people's <laughs> names. <laughs> okay. Should we do another take? No. No. <laughs> this is a one-shot movie. Hmm. Um. Bonfall says Fizzleby sounds like a soda. I drink it. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> oh, the French um, champagne. I want to drink. <laughs> um, okay, so it's a s city skyline, and we can tell already that it's a Turkish city skyline. The sun baking down. Switch to the train station. There's a train idling in the station, smoke gently billowing from its smokestack, and there's people dressed in uh, uh, various garb. And over top, we see Istanbul, 1937, and there's people bustling all around the platform, hopping on and off the train. We get all the way to the front and a man steps off and he takes, and he puts on his cap and he lifts his head and it's me, it's Reginald Hatchins and I'm the conductor. <laughs> and I look up and down the train and I check my watch and I call out, Eustace, Eustace Fizzleby, Eustace. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Eustace. 30 seconds to departure. Where are the bags? Where are the passengers? The bags are all aboard, and so are the passengers, sir. Are you sure? I am quite sure. Are you? As always. But clearly you're not certain, otherwise you would have said you were certain. I am certain and sure. Absolutely. Let me see the manifest. Let me see the manifest. Yes, yes, yes. No. Yes. Oh, good to see our good friend uh, Detective Dubois is on board. <laughs> Have you seated him? Uh, of course, sir. Right away, he is our most honored passenger. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, thank you, Eustace. But uh, this conversation took forty-five seconds, which means we're now late, Eustace. Thank you very much once again for a late departure. My apologies, sir. Ah, oh, all aboard! And he hops back on, and he goes. And the train starts to pull out of the stage. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, I, do we have to give you a die? 
Yes, you have to give me a die. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, and it's only the color that matters, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think because I kind of ended the scene so quickly, I feel like it's a black die for me because I'm late. You right. know what I mean? Okay. I was going to give yeah. you a black die anyway, so that's fine. Okay. I just so, want to interrupt that great. Uh, <laughs> doot, doot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So now it's your turn. Uh, uh, actually, we're going to Jimmy. Well, should we go in the roll 20 order or the cam? Well, actually, roll 20 order because that's what the um, audience is seeing. So yeah. now it's your turn, Helmet. It's my turn? <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to set the scene. Um, so we were just at the station in Istanbul. Yeah. Um, now this scene's going to be maybe 20 minutes after the train left. Okay. And I'm in the dining car sitting at the table uh, by myself getting ready to order. Okay. Um, uh, so there's, can uh, there's I... other people... Oh, no, you can go. Sir, what can I get for you today? A, uh, would, uh... <laughs> you're just going to be like, you're just going to be circling that accent drain the yeah, entire stream. I, really am. I, I had a whole French thing set up, and then uh, I, 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 uh, oui, uh, may, I, may I have uh, a Belgian waffle? Yes, sir, we <laughs> only uh, have French waffles. Would that be okay? Uh, yeah. uh, no, I uh, will have uh, cigarettes then. So, do you want, <laughs> do you want to know a secret? We. Uh, oui. This, uh, of course, a man of your distinction. You would probably discern this anyway. But we call them French waffles, but we actually make them by a Belgian chef. No. We. Oui. Would you like our uh, French waffles? Oh, oui, 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 oui. Oui, okay. Okay. Au revoir. Uh, uh, and so I'll, he'll, he'll kind of set about uh, getting ready uh, to eat. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. If, if only someone else was here to talk to me and or <laughs> leaned over from a different table. Dubois. Detective Dubois, what a fantastic pleasure to see you once again aboard my train. What brings ah. this pleasure about? I uh, work. <laughs> ah, not pleasure. We're heading west. Would I be correct in surmising that your work is a case in the west, in Europe? Uh, you, you could say... Yeah, yeah, Jimmy. White die. White. White die. Am I doing it right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah. West is Europe. Oh, I almost yeah, messed yeah. it up in my brain. <laughs> it's a brilliant brain. It really hurt my brain. Uh, <laughs> no, because I was going to make a, a great joke, but it's not oh, such sense. a good bird. Oh, you're such a brilliant detective. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should still make a terrible joke. Uh, uh, oh, we are uh, investigating the uh, Queen of England uh, <gasps> suicide. <No. gasps> <laughs> I've read about the papers. I tell you, sir, I cried for hours like any good British gentleman. Just ah, the see, poor, poor Queen. Ah, she was, uh, as you say, horrible. Yes. Uh, and her daughter. Uh, her poor daughter, <laughs> Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, uh, very fine. I believe she's four, <laughs> sir. <laughs> she's... Well, when in Rome. Uh, yes, well, I'm uh, winning a train. I should head to the front, clearly. Uh, but best of luck, sir. Best of luck. Uh, thank you. Ah, uh, the Belgian... I mean, the French waffle is... Uh, here it is. Uh, uh, is it up to your standards? Uh, it is springy. May I say it is Bring the best it. French waffle you've ever had? Uh, it is the only French waffle I've ever had. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't know. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias. Yes. All right. I think that's scene. Uh, yeah, I think that's scene. I got my waffle. Eustace. We have something right. set up. The Queen of England has committed... Was it murder or suicide? Suicide. 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 Why would I uh, investigate a suicide? <laughs> <laughs> On this train. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm on my way there. I'm not investigating anything on the train. Oh. <laughs> not yet. 
not yet. Yeah. Um, so we're heading west from Istanbul. Yeah, to Europe right? somewhere, okay. which I believe, if, okay. if I remember correctly, it, it ends in Paris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, all right. For my scene, um, uh -huh. I am in the rearmost passenger car. I being Eustace Fizzleby, mm -hmm. uh, the most brilliantly designed character of all time. Um, and this back passenger car is very sparsely populated. There's mm -hmm. maybe just like mm -hmm. two other people near the front of the car. They're both sitting separately and both appear to be dozing. One with a hat kind of tipped over his head and the other one that seems to be completely conked out and sprawled out. But uh, there's somebody in the back of the train, a rather shadowy looking figure. Uh, he's wearing a very large trench coat and mm -hmm. he has his hat pulled down very tight and he seems to not want to draw suspicions to himself. And I walked up to him and I say, hello, uh, Roger, do you have the gem? The gem, Eustace. It, yes, the 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 jaguar, the eye of the jaguar. Yes, the jaguar gem. And he opens well, his I kite, know. his coat, just slightly, and there's like that like seventies seventies effect where it's like pew bedazzle, you know, like a like really excessive lens flare. I want it to be a gigantic <laughs> rock, so it's huge, like, <laughs> like it's not really He all, opens his coat, huge. and you realize he's actually very skinny. The rest of the coat is the gem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, Would that do, Eustace? Yes. Now, quickly, pass it here. I have to secure it in the secret box under the uh, frontmost passenger train. Yes. Uh, so that yes. it's kept secret and safe. Yes. And I have heard from our yes. brothers in England that they have successfully murdered the queen and staged it yes. to appear to be yes. a suicide. Yes. And yes. once we show up in yes. England with this yes. eye of the jaguar stolen from yes. the Istanbul royalty, yes. don't question me on that fact. Yes. Um, uh, we, I'm going to say black die, by the way. Oh, oh okay. Yes. We will be able to ransom our way yes. to yes. something. I haven't figured it out yet, yes. but yes. oh, we've got a big rock and it looks yes. pretty nice. Yes, Eustace, things are looking up, but, and I grab your collar and I say, Eustace, you must follow my one instruction. Uh -huh. Don't, don't look into the eye of the Jaguar. Oh yeah, sure, okay. Eustace. Don't look at it. Yes, my name Don't is Don't look into the eye of the Jaguar. Look into the eye of the Jaguar. Confirmed, sir. I yes, that's there. correct. I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> I said what you said several times now, which was look into the eye. Do not forget to look into the eye of the Jaguar. Yes, that's right. I did not say that, but I do want you to... No, I don't want you to do it, but I did... I just fetch it over here. Okay, yes, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, must be getting on. And he opens the back door and just hops off the train. <laughs> so okay. I, I kind of covered up with a sheet that I brought with me, and I'm mm -hmm. quietly making my way to the front. But much like Peregrine took with the uh, Palantir mm. from Isengard. Uh, 40 minutes, can't... Jimmy. It only took 40 minutes for a Lord of the Rings reference to pop out. I didn't know we were doing Lord of the Rings references. No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> uh, I just can't help myself but to just move the sheet aside a little bit and take a little peeky poo <gasps> down at the eye of the Jaguar. My breath is just stolen away. Yes, I look and I'm completely <laughs> entranced and I die. So <laughs> no. I think um, I think I think it's we just see you entranced and that's the end of the scene. That's the black die. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Um, or no, you see that you just see a green glow come out of the room he's in. Yeah. Um, hello, Caleb. Thanks for joining. We're playing Fiasco. Um, I'm not gonna spend the whole time catching up, but you can see our character descriptions and our relationships with each other on the on the screen. Uh, we're actually only about a quarter of the way through, so good stuff. 
And so these are not our real live names and professions. <laughs> these are just roles. What are you talking about? Yeah. My name is Helmut Dubois. <laughs> no, no, he's he's right. His real name's Jimmy Fizzleby. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually Peregrine Tug. Okay, all right. My turn. <clears throat> so I'm the conductor. And um, I'm, I'm walking through the train. And I'm swinging my stopwatch. I mean, my, uh, my watch chain. Walking through. Oh, and I trip over something. And I look down. And it's a box. And I open up the box. And it's like a little tiny box. And I open it. And I go... Hmm. And then we do a little quick cut to me knocking on a door of a sleeper cab. And Helmet opens the door. <laughs> Detective, I'm sorry to bother you, but Is I've no problem? found something I think you may find interesting. What yes, please, he? blow smoke in my face. It's the 30s. <laughs> I love it. Guess what? Oh... Yes, yes. Uh, helmet, if I may. It, can I come in? Uh, let me get uh, decent quickie, and then I will let you in. He's completely okay. naked. <laughs> <laughs> so I stand, in the, uh, I stand in the outside for like 20 seconds, and I'm just a little nervous, a little nervous, and then you let me back in, I'm assuming. Yeah, then I let you back in. I come and back I in. I literally just have underwear on. And it's the two of us, and we're in this little tiny sleeper cabin, so there's barely room for us to stand up, and I'm right next to you, and I say... Detective. Yes. I, like any good English gentleman I mentioned, was terribly stricken by the Queen's, well, terrible self inflicted decision. A the other self immolation, day. we call it. Yes, but. She said herself I, on fire? I couldn't. What is that? Uh, someone saying things? I couldn't uh, help but. Uh, I couldn't help but look at the picture of her in the newspaper and the picture of the crime scene over and over again and. One detail stood out to me, and just now, doing my inspection of the train, as I do as a diligent conductor, I tripped over something. Something uh -huh. I saw in the photo in the newspaper, Ugh. unmistakably, from the, the crime shoes? scene. And I open the box, and it's a kangaroo hide bullwhip. And I say, if I'm not mistaken, detective, this is what she hung herself with. <laughs> Before the fire. <laughs> You would be correct. This is not the same whip, but it is the same craftsman. No. No. Detective. I'm sorry, but I believe you're mistaken. And I take out a newspaper clipping. And the newspaper clipping and the kangaroo bullwhip. The clipping with the picture of the bullwhip, it matches. And they have initials on them. Well, detective, call me a I don't know how. Detective. But this is, without a doubt, the same bullwhip. There is something mysterious at work. White dye. White dye. Helmet, perhaps we should come up with a game plan, start to interview. I, you are the detective. Anything you need. I am? Yes, I am. Is at your disposal, and I will help it, and so will Eustace. But let me tell you this. Whoever suicided the queen <laughs> is on this train, without a doubt. And maybe, just maybe, they might be, God forbid... Australian. I hate them. I cannot know for certain. <laughs> Scene. Boom. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Helmet's turn. Oh, Helmet. crap. Okay, um, so the next scene... Hmm. I'm going to say the next scene I am looking through crew cabins while it's the middle of the day so all the crew is up at the passenger cars okay so i'm going to be investigating uh the cabins back there so you basically you're watching me like kind of like jimmy the lock to get in mm -hmm. uh like through between the trains nice side shot and then working in i'm like looking through stuff and then i see like head porter door mm. and and I see like a little bit of green glow underneath it. <gasps> and I look at that. And so I'm going to, we'll pick up, I guess I'll start jimmying the lock when somebody catches me doing that. I don't know who. 
It can either be your characters or someone can just pop in and say something. Uh, excuse me, uh, Helmets, are you trying to break into my office? Uh, I'm uh, so sorry, I uh, tripped and my hairpin went into the lock. <laughs> and the spring and, and it is opened. You'll have to do better than that, Helmut. I, I know you too well. Oh, sorry, I was uh, sleeping here? You were sleeping right here. Yes, in the, in the door. Hug, with the with the hairpin. <laughs> yes. In in the. But what the is this? Is that some sort of jewel? Uh, 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 no, no. You, you can't see it, can you? Well, I, is it normal? It, it, it's a <laughs> The door doesn't even open the whole way. <laughs> Wait, can it's can a... can he see it or not, or can he just see the glow from it? I uh, I'm gonna say he can see like. Well, how big is this? This thing's pretty big, right? I mean, I'm gonna covered. think, yeah, maybe he has the, because he said the door was unlocked. So maybe the door's open by like two inches and he can see a sliver of what looks like a gem, but he can't tell how yeah. big it is or how important it is. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a yeah. black die to Helmet. So however oh, you guys no. want to continue the scene, just know it has to have a bad ending. Okay, I think I have a pretty good ending. So I'm gonna like push against the door some more and try to open it um and i i is it big enough that you think this would give the door yeah well but i think if it sounds like eustace is there stopping you from opening the door right okay yeah, eustace is there. just continuing to break into my office. <laughs> yeah like <laughs> eustace is there like the like holding you back unlocked. being like don't go in my room you know what i mean that's what i thought was happening so these are. This is my private office. Oh, I am. Uh, most sorry. I I was given full permission by uh, the conductor to search any of these rooms. Oh, so, really? Well, you would you wouldn't mind if I just tidy up a bit, you know? I, go <laughs> ahead. I will. You know, I will I wait out here. Things. <laughs> like I have so, this uh, funny little green uh, mood rock that you know just uh, helps me regulate. Uh, my feelings help me check in with me, you know. Uh, so <laughs> okay, you know, I will. Wait, I will wait here as you tidy up and destroy oh, the residence, yeah. as we call it. <laughs> uh, so I'll let um, you just go in there, and then immediately I'll pull out a a cup out of my pocket and just mm -hmm. lean it up against the door to listen in. This is my mood rock. I'm putting away my mood rock. And this is the song I sing while I do it. This is the truth. This is the truth. He loves to sing. Scene. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. I guess it's not something bad that happened. I just couldn't further my investigation. Yeah. Uh, okay. So your turn, Eustace. All right. Um, while it, it just goes to the interior of me seeing that, and I am hurriedly running around and wrapping up the rock while just trying to sound nonchalant and, you know, singing a very typical, you know, normal uh -huh. song that anybody would sing while cleaning up. Um, and I, I have it wrapped up, and I say, ah, well, um, time for me. I'm only talking to myself right now. Uh, to get to work and sit down and do some work. But then I just like kind of open the window or, mm -hmm. or maybe there's a door behind me to a different uh, car. And I'll just very quietly go out and close the door and keep going. And while I'm walking, there's kind of a, a <laughs> I guess, a flashback to... Mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess before we got on the train of uh, one of my superiors at a meeting at a cafe in Istanbul, uh, just informing me of what the plan is. And he, and, uh, he says, I guess I can't have one of you do that if it's something bad. Oh, well, I already played Roger. So I feel yes. like well, Will should play the other right. anarchist accomplice. Well, uh, so... Do I have this right that now that the queen is dead, there will be chaos at uh, Buckingham Palace? And once we get this gem that can entrance people, we just take it to the royal British government. We show it to them. They become our thralls. And then we get appointed the new monarchs. Oh, 
all right. Yeah, that's how he's going. Um, I'm barely Australian. <laughs> yes, and... you have a bull whip. Bull whip. Hey, my bull whip. Bull whip. Bull whip. This is, this is straight from the Queen. And I'm quite losing the accent here and going a little bit a little too much, but I don't quite. <laughs> Gilbert Grape. I don't quite care oh. uh, what is going on. But that's about the jitty of it, my friend. Uh, I've given you the contact, and he's going to meet you on the back of the train all the way to the back. And he's going to give you the mm -hmm. eye of Jaguar. Great, great. And what a great job you did snapping that old lady's neck. Oh. <laughs> and when she burst uh, in the flames, it was crazy. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't expecting it. I think she's a phoenix. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, give her a, a white die. White die. White die. Yep. If you make it through this, there's $50,000 on the line for you. Fantastic. But I will take the money, but... I don't do it for the money. I do it for the cause of destroying the systems of government around this planet that keep the people oppressed. A state yeah, of yeah. nature should be what rules. You're crazy. Yeah. See? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, see. Okay, so now we do the tilt. So the way the tilt works is that all of us are going to roll our die, which I, I have to do, so let me do that. So, <gasps> did that actually roll? There we go. Roll these die. And then we, we actually split evenly. We all have one black and one white. So basically, whoever has the highest white number and whoever has the highest black number, which is myself and uh, Eustace, we now get to, from these die that I'm going to re-roll in the middle. We get to, what is it? One, two, four, five. We get to choose the tilt. Um, it's going to be a little hard to do this, Jimmy, because I realized I didn't give you the tilt table. But the tilt table basically yeah. looks just like a normal table. And uh, there's things like mayhem, tragedy, innocence, guilt, paranoia, or failure. So what's going to happen is that you're going to choose a top level. I choose a top level. There's two tilts. And then I'll choose your detail and you choose my detail. And we can select from the dice in the middle. So basically, I'll read you the four options and you choose one. And then I'll choose one and then we'll, we'll keep going from there. So the four options are, what is that? One, two, four, five. So mayhem, tragedy, guilt, or paranoia. Um, mm, mm, mayhem. Okay. Let me write that up here real quick. This is Mayhem. And Mayhem was a one. So put that over there. Okay, so now I get to choose Mayhem, Tragedy, Guilt, or Paranoia. I'm going to go with um, Paranoia. Okay. Let me put this here. Okay. So now, Jimmy, you get to choose my paranoia detail, which is either a stranger arrives to settle a score, what seems like dumb luck isn't, things are afoot, or a sudden reversal of status, of fortune, of sympathy, etc. Things are afoot? Yeah, one of them is what seems like dumb luck isn't, things are afoot. Okay. Uh, sure, let's go with that. Um, hi, Jed. Thanks for joining. This is uh, Fiasco. We're about halfway through. It's like a one-shot collaborative storytelling uh, RPG. It's, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, <clears throat> Ian, mm -hmm. when you do a scene, you don't have to be your character, right? Yeah, you don't. You don't have to be. No. Okay. Well, I I think you do have to be, but I usually ignore that rule. Right. I was just saying, yeah. like in the um, 
no no i guess that wouldn't have mattered never mind but yeah just so you can you can at any time like jump into any scene and do stuff yeah okay i'm gonna add a frantic chase Ooh. maybe we can bring the passenger car in that way for the location okay so um i'm gonna put all these die down here so they're not covering stuff whoops don't worry, they're all going to get re-rolled anyways. So now we go around again, two times. Um, just with these tilts in mind, number one, a frantic chase. And number two, things are afoot. Um, so paranoia, things are afoot, mayhem, a frantic chase. And I don't believe we've talked about under a passenger car yet. And then... Um, oh, I, I mm -hmm. for under a passenger car. I said that there was a secret container oh. that I was going to put... The oh. gem and under the passenger car, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Ian. <clears throat> I thought you meant like an actual passenger car. Oh, you know what? I just realized they mean passenger car on a train, not like a car that has passengers <laughs> in it. Oh my god! Are you serious? <laughs> but really? That would have worked in. Car. You would think that they meant like a car that you drive but you sleep in while you drive it. Yeah, an RV. <laughs> Um, so the one thing I forgot to mention to you, Jimmy, is that we have, we each do two more scenes, but at the end of it, we roll all of our dice and there's an aftermath table, which just kind of gives you like a general breakdown of like, Hey, your character ended up in a very bad spot and is probably dead or like, Hey, your character ended up okay. And things are looking up for him. And so after you've done your scene and you get your aftermath, there's like an epilogue, which is kind of like an almost like an after credits where you basically just get to describe what happened to your character at the very end. If that makes sense. So, so don't think about everything. It's not that everything needs to wrap up in these scenes. There's still one last chance for you to come back and say like, my character got away. They lived a fantastic life until they were 80 and they got caught and they spent two years in jail before they died. You know? So like you do get a final epilogue you can say about your character. Okay. okay. Are we ready? And is, is there a rule about when exactly the tilts have to happen? Or is that no. just up to our discussion? Mm -hmm. No, they're kind of just things that color how the story changes in the second act, in a way. Okay. All right, so... Um, <clears throat> I am... It's the next morning. And Helmut is in the dining car, eating two pan, two waffles... Two, two, two separate plates, like. And, and ice cream out of a waffle cone. Yes, and ice cream out of a waffle cone. And I come up and I say, Detective Dubois, uh, may we may we have a moment? Yes, yeah, see. Good. Everyone leave. I am the conductor and I wish to have a <laughs> private conversation in this dining car. Oh, well, I've never. Well, ma'am, oh. now you shall. <laughs> And they all leave. Don't talk to my wife like that. <laughs> Privilege of being right. a conductor. Yes, I have to listen to him and I open a window and just... <laughs> well, um, detective, have you made any progress on our investigation? Uh, uh, oui. Please. I think, uh, <laughs> I think there's something wrong with your Eustace Fizzleby. Well, detective, I can tell you with certainty there is something wrong with <gasps> Eustace Vizzle. He's a piss poor worker. He's always making me late, and I can't stand that smug look of his. And he always thinks about his mood rocks. Uh, yes, his, excuse me? His what? He has a green gem in his room that is mood rock. I, I was breaking into his office and he cut me. Excuse and then I wait me? There for four I strictly hours. forbade any sorcery, witchery, or hocus <laughs> pocus on board here, and I've sent out several memos stating such fact. We, I learned that when I consulted the Ouija board. My um, goodness. My goodness. This moon rock, it's in his room. Uh, I, as far as I know, he went out the window. I believe we should go look at it right this instant. I will follow you. Let's go. Scene? I Scene. think. Yeah, I, I think that's a white die for me. 
Uh, yeah, sorry, I should have. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Jumped Anybody can hop in. And, um, if it makes you feel better, the dice don't really matter. <laughs> Okay. Like the end, you roll them, but like you'll see that all it's just yeah. it just. But you don't want Ian to win, so don't give him that. But I'm in the lead. <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> I put myself you'll, in the lead. You'll never catch up. <laughs> um, okay, Helmut. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pick it up right after that. Mm -hmm. But we are now at um, uh, uh, Eustace's uh, mm -hmm. door, and so once again, I'm. So uh, you're there with me, Reginald Hatchins, and uh, I'll be like, I, sh I will show you what I am talking about. So I'll open the door, and mm -hmm. right as I open the door, I see a leg go out the window. <gasps> and then, so we both rush over, look, and we see, um, we can't, we're not really sure, but I'm pretty sure it's Eustace climbing down to get under and climb under the train cars. Oh my goodness. That little scamp! I knew it. <laughs> Helmet, get the rear. So I'll save. You head towards the rear. I'll head towards the front. Hui, and I'll pull out a, like a double-barreled shotgun and just start <laughs> running down the hallway. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This doesn't actually happen. But when you said double barrel, I immediately wanted to say, "Can I have one of those? <laughs> give me one of the <laughs> barrels, split please." Them in half, but I give you half of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'll run. Uh, so then we'll do like a great shot where the camera comes out of the train and mm -hmm. like you're leaning out and then you just see me running down the hallway to the like nearest con connector and yeah. like looking down under to seeing how far he's climbing underneath. Mm -hmm. And he's like two cars up. So I'm running and I'm going to go run up to the next car that he's still under and I'm going to lean down and black I'm going to... And, oh, black die. Good, I'm going to see him that, and yeah. I'm going to go... Eustace, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say he looks up before he responds, and there's just green eyes. <gasps> nice. Is that um, is that is, is that scene, or I feel like something worse has to happen? I was uh, yeah, I was then gonna say the train hits sort of some sort of bump, and I fall, and that's where the scene ends. Maybe. Well, I was thinking. I feel like that's a little bit too. Maybe if you just drop your gun. I was I wasn't gonna say fall off the train. I was gonna say like I, it's clear that I'm going like falling and I might uh -huh. catch myself, but oh, it's okay. the end of the scene. Okay. Uh, you so could just see me dropping my gun. Bonfall had a very good point. Now I know this is a game. There are no guns in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Especially uh, double barrel shotguns. Uh, Eustace, your turn. Um, I say Dave. Oh no, Jimmy. Oh no. Oh no, Jimmy. Jimmy froze. Oh no, oh, no Jimmy. He yelled his he yelled his way out. He yelled so hard he left the game. Oh no. What happened? Oh, you you're yelled, in a different spot now. You yelled so hard oh, you left my. the game. Sorry, that's the uh, that's the power of the eye of the Jaguar. Um I say they've come. You've come for the eye of the Jaguar, but it is mine. My own my no. no rock <laughs> <laughs> wait did, wait just to be clear who are you screaming at i i kind of lost where uh, you are i think he's picking well, up I, right after me oh okay. yeah I, yeah okay. and I'm, I'm scrambling underneath and i've seen uh helmet already screamed at me so i'm clamoring mm -hmm. um <laughs> okay that was really good thank you for that okay but as you're clamoring as you come up yes. towards the edge of a train car I'm the conductor, and I just put my head down, and I say, Hello, Eustace. Useless Eustace. And I'm, like, right in front of you. Happens. I would like to take a hatchet to your head and kill you. I knew you were always a worthless head porter. You should have been a sub porter. Can somebody let me out back on the train? <laughs> you will never get the eye. And uh, I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give... Is, is that the end of the scene, or? I don't know. I think I have a good ending, which is, I I see the situation, you're heading off, but then Helmet just screamed, and I'm going to give Eustace a white die, which means that I leave the pursuit to go get Helmet. Ah, to go good, help him. Good. So you get away for now. Um, okay, so now it's, oh, it's my turn. It's my turn. 
Okay, okay. I'm gonna say, Helmut. We must hatch a plan. And I'm going to spend several minutes detailing to you how much we need a plan to give me time to come up with said plan. This is a good <laughs> idea. <clears throat> I'm still bleeding. Perhaps we should talk through this. Yes. He has a giant gem that has somehow taken possession of him. Where would you take a gem on this train? Mm -hmm. Or perhaps if you are trying to leave the train. If you're trying to leave I the would... train, there's only two ways off. You can jump or you can wait for the train station. Or mm. even crazier, you can yes. head you can head to the caboose <gasps> and unlatch it. <gasps> and once no. it has slowed to a stop, you can get away. And that is dastardly. Eustace is such a useless <laughs> person. Helmet. What shall we do? <laughs> You are the detective. Which do you think is most likely? He'll wait for the next train station. He'll jump from the train, or he'll take the caboose and kitten caboodle. I think he is taking the gem to somewhere, for sure. I think <laughs> he might want it. Detective, I uh, can clearly tell that you've hit your head rather hard because these conclusions are not... Uh... Not exactly a mystery. Uh, <laughs> yes, you hear scream, screamed out, um, I'm taking the jewel to the caboose. I'm taking it to the caboose. Detective, if I may, I've just had a bit of inspiration. Is it the caboose? It is the caboose to the caboose. It is because you are That's a moose now. You are a big moose and we are going to the caboose. Yes, exactly. I Maybe I head. should hold your gun for you. Ah, uh, <laughs> Okay, yes, one barrel left then. Uh, I'm going to give us a white die just because you told us you're going to the caboose. <laughs> um, okay. Should have been a black die and one get shot. So the good news is there's one scene left for, for each of you and they're both black dies, so they both have to end badly, starting with helmet. Okay, so we're going to race to the back of the train mm -hmm. to the caboose. Uh, I've suffered some sort of brain injury. <laughs> um, me and Re Reginald... I'm going to say we get to the caboose and oh man so we're out there and so the door's locked to the caboose but Eustace is on the other side laughing maniacally and staring at the gem <laughs> um or sorry I should say the door on the previous car is locked because he has to be at where he's pulling oh okay like the pin so he's yeah. laughing maniacally at that <laughs> and then <laughs> We break down the door <laughs> right as he he's like we break down the door and the camera pans up and he's just holding the pin. Mm -hmm. And so I jump and reach out and grab it at like Captain America style. <gasps> but and but hold I, it. But I see wait, I was gonna say I see you jump, so I grab your feet. <laughs> so oh, you're no. holding onto it with your hands and I'm holding onto your okay. feet. And I I'm just like, I've got him, I've got him, hook my feet. And so you have to hook my feet into the latch on the other side, but you know this will rip me apart for oh, longer than... Helmet, are you sure, detective? Are you sure? Do it, do it you beautiful moose! And with this, the oh. missing link in the case is solved, and I put your feet in the link. And you walk across me. <laughs> and then you get, you get ripped in half? And then I get ripped in half. Okay. But you're on the caboose now. Okay, so I'm on the caboose. You got ripped in half. It's Eustace's turn, a scene. So now it's Eustace. Um, and this has to go badly for you. Not that it has to go good for me. It just, it has to be a bad ending for you. All right. Um, all right, I say, I hiss at you. Mm -hmm. I say, ah, you're a worthless capitalist pig. All governments must burn. But this, this eye of the jaguar must always remain mine. Listen to me, Eustace. I can forgive yes. your poor work ethic, work ethic. I can forgive how many times you've made me late. I can even forgive this obsession with this gem. I can even forgive you besmirching the great honor of capitalism in Western democracy. But let me ask you one question and one question only, and you answer truthfully on your life. Did you? <laughs> Sorry, I saw that in the corner of my eye. Was that a proceed? 
It was. <laughs> yes. A little tingle. Eustace <laughs> Fizzleby, did you hurt my queen? I wrung her pretty little neck with a bull whip. Well, not me personally, but one of my friends, an Australian fellow, kind of weird, a little off. Hello. Uh, um, well, Eustace, and he slowly, like, takes off his conductor's cap. And he takes off the train whistle around his neck. <laughs> and he, like, wraps it around his knuckles. So it's like a brass knuckles. <laughs> Eustace, time for you to get off my train. <laughs> um, I mean, right. I, do you do anything? Um, I will lunge at you to attack. Okay. And then I just, just one punch and you're down. <laughs> Do I fall off? I think I or... think you're one punch and you're down. All right. What happens to the eye of the jaguar? I think it just falls. Oh. I don't really care about the eye of the jaguar. And then I think I just pick you up by your ankles and I toss you off the train. And I say, excess baggage! <laughs> and I toss no. you off the train. Um, um, what happens to my uh, body? Oh, well, we'll figure that out oh, in the aftermath. Yeah, I was okay. gonna say, can the can the eye of the jaguar fall land on the the floor and then like aliens alien blood through the floor, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like it melt through the floor? It's like it's the Ark of the Covenant burns like the Nazi yeah. thing. And I was trying to think of like I do think it should be destroyed, but there's no. I was gonna say like shatters. It, like if yeah, I think shatters. Maybe it shatters, and it yeah. turns out it wasn't. It was just glass all along. Yeah. So when I punch you. It flies through he the air, off. shatters, and I toss you off the... Okay. So that's scene. Scene. Great. It's uh, pretty good. Bonfall's enjoying this. He said somebody should clip this whole stream. I think it's recorded, and it's on YouTube recorded, so... Boom. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to put the sound effects in this afterwards. Oh, perfect. Okay, so here's how the aftermath goes. So for each of you... Uh, it, Basically, we're going to roll all the die that you got, and then we subtract the... We, we divide it into a white number and a black number based on the white or black die, and then we subtract the smaller number from the bigger number, and it gets you, like, a black or a white number. Uh, I know it's complicated, but the good news is I'm going to do it for you. So let's start with... Um... <laughs> then why'd you explain it? <laughs> well, I just like the idea of no, I'm just people kidding. wanting to play... Shut up, Will. Uh, okay, I'm going to roll these. Expressions. I'm just going to do it. So that's a that's a white 14 and a black 5. So 14 minus 5 is 9. So I basically got a white 9. So aftermath, white 9 is nothing to crow about. Not better, but not way worse either. Maybe the car is wrecked, or your wife is leaving you, or there's a court date. But compared to some of the other people you know... Um, so I think, I, I think this is going to be a little lackluster for me but i think that's kind of what it should be is it's just reginald he just says he pulls into the next station and he says station master i must report two deaths one a criminal the other a dear friend one body's been disposed of the other is likely on the tracks somewhere but station master i tell you this even with grief in my heart for my queen and my friend justice has prevailed and the train must go on. All aboard! <laughs> okay, Will, let's roll for you. Uh, so people can't see this because our cameras are covered, but who cares? Wow. It's just die. It's just die. So you got a, mm. uh, what is that, an eight black and a three white, so that's a five black. Black five. <laughs> Rough. You are getting whipped like a rented mule for starters, and you will remember this episode for all your diminished days. The lesson you learn will be profound, lingering, and painful. So I know you're already dead, but I think maybe, maybe something with your legacy, just to give you an idea, anything that could happen, either your legacy or something, it's just not, it's going to be rough. So how, how would you describe that aftermath or epilogue for your character? I'm going to say it cuts to Buckingham Palace, and it's, 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 the next royal, uh, let's say Prince Greg, or King Greg, I should mm -hmm. say, now. And he's like, hey, what? Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> um, Finally, we get to country. 
well, where is that Belgian uh, famous detective? And uh, there'll be like a quick knock. He's like, I think he's here now. And he opens the door and says, hello, I'm Hercule Poirot. And he goes, yes, that's the man I was thinking of. There's no other Belgian detectives. <laughs> Oh god, that's like it's a real that's like a that's a gut shot to helmet. <laughs> you don't and exist then, anymore. Uh, Hercule Poirot just smiles because he knows Helmet died. <laughs> and he's defeated his legacy. Oh boy. Uh Bonfall says he was hoping Dubois would survive a bifurcation. <laughs> I was hoping if you rolled really well, I was gonna have myself roll up next to you half of me in a wheelchair. The first Belgian <laughs> bionic detective. <laughs> That spider legs, like um, <laughs> that'd be awesome. <laughs> is, man, Disney screwed Star Wars so bad. Anyways, oh, um, man, can we do? Never mind. Uh, Eustace Fizzleby, here we go. I'm gonna roll for you. What an honor! Shut up, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a white four. Bitter. You know what it's. Me. <laughs> you know what it's like to be utterly crushed, casually brought low, forced to eat your own words, and stand mute and powerless before your enemies. They gloat, and you are helpless. Now, just to be clear, you're not. We didn't declare you dead. You just. You're just off not the train. Dead. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. with that description, what's your character's epilogue slash aftermath? All right. I. Uh, so I fall down on the tracks and I roll a whole bunch of times, get really bloody, a lot of my bones break. We were also on a mountain pass at the time, so then I just start falling down the slope of the mountain, slamming into trees, rocks. Um, <laughs> Wait, I'm just picturing this. Just like really butchering me. I just, um, um, I'm picturing this fall is so long that it's like the video that plays behind the movie credits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's like uh, Homer Simpson falling down the uh, canyon. Yeah. Um, in Art the Daredevil. Um, great episode. <laughs> um, uh, so I continue to fall, then I just go through a cactus patch. <laughs> just needles slamming me um and then uh finally come to rest on the ground and as soon as i land a horde of wolves comes from every direction and just rips my body apart wow that's the uh after credit yeah. scene yeah well folks um oh, yeah. that's fiasco uh yeah. that was fiasco on the disoriented express that was pretty good Ooh um that Jimmy, was pretty good i'm curious that was y your first time playing fiasco what did you think of it as like a as like a system it was fun i liked it this is the first real like improv heavy mm -hmm. like game like this that i've played but it has uh piqued my curiosity yeah in other games of the sort and maybe further rounds of this game mm -hmm. yeah yeah, there's literally like a, more than a hundred fan-made and official-made play sets for this. So like we chose the train one, but I've played one in a prison before. Will and I have played one that was on a transatlantic ship, kind of like a Titanic one. Um, it's it's just a great system. It's fantastic. It's very good. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's gonna do it for us. I think, gentlemen, I don't want to make any promises, but this has been do a it. rousing success. I think we should definitely come back to at least this type of role-playing game maybe the guests will change maybe the format will change etc but i think this is just a great stream and especially with fiasco that only took an hour 15 to knock out yeah including setup it's, i'll do it again it'll be longer with four players but i think it's it's almost better with four players because then you get 25 percent more scenes and the story gets crazier and crazier uh, bye jimmy uh, <laughs> Oh, hi jimmy <laughs> I thought you were rambling, so I was like, I can't, I can't take any more of this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been this has been Subpixel. Um, I'm Ian Gibson. You can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson. Will, where can people find you? You can find me at Hunt270 on Twitter. And Jimmy, where can people I'm, find you? I'm Jimmy. 
Good enough. Um, I'm at Jommy Jones. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, don't even. Which is not a joke. That's actually true. Can you spell it, please? Okay. At That's an at symbol. Um, J-O-M-N-Y-J-O-M-E-S. Okay. Got it. Um, we'll make sure to put that in the YouTube description so you guys can uh, click to that on easily. And we are Subpixel. Uh, you can find all of our content at subpixelfilms.com. We have a brand new documentary coming out this Friday on the Halo CE mod community. Yes, that's right. I said the Halo CE, that's the Halo 1 PC edition, still has an active mod community. What, what has it been, Will? Like 18, 19 18, years? Later? years. It's it's crazy. Uh, they're making fantastic stuff. We did a little mini doc on them. We also have a stream coming up on Tuesday. We're going to be playing the brand new, everybody's talking about it, Final Fantasy XI, the MMO. <laughs> That's not a joke, Jimmy. We're actually playing that on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. You guys yeah, we are. are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Ian, you got time to download it now. No. I don't want to play <laughs> Will just told me, so every time we play one of these old MMOs, the, the setup is so horribly complicated because it's like some server that's barely running and has 20 people on it, and like the <laughs> software doesn't run, and then he sent me a message saying that this one is even more complicated to get installed and running, and I said, so complicated. I said, great, you install it, and I'll just watch you play it instead of us normally playing it together. Oh, it was so um, good. But, you managed to make it even more exciting. Exactly. Um, so that's Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. If you want to hear more about uh, behind the scenes stuff, upcoming stuff, us teasing new streams, like for example, we put out a tweet about this stream at 3 p.m. today, just letting you know it's going to happen. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Subpixel Team. Oh boy. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think this has been a rousing success. Any any uh, final words, Will? Um, when in Rome, time to bone. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had uh, so much fun. I'm so glad you didn't back out of this like you tried to about a dozen times this week. And you, I, you, yeah. know, you don't have to give a solid answer now, but do you feel like joining in the future again? This was a lot of fun. I'll say yes now, but then no several dozen times between. Oh, yeah. I, I just got the text message from you that says I actually meant no. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I get those two. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys, um, and uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, you know, give it a like, give us a follow, give us a comment, a subscribe, any way that you can interact with this video. We'll see it, and it lets us know that you enjoyed it, and we should do more of it. And it also lets uh, YouTube, Twitch Mixer, it lets the system know that our content is worth putting in front of everybody else. I know you guys had a lot of fun watching it. We had a lot of fun playing it. And most importantly, we had a lot of fun. Just fun. Period. Fun. Will, that's hideous. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Bye. Yeah.